Good evening, folks. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today, the 28th on Thursday, the 28th of May, and um, trust that you've had a productive day and um, you've experienced God's goodness, God's grace along the path along the way today so let's get started with our evening evening opening evening prayer <clears throat> oh god make speed to save us oh lord make haste to help us send your holy spirit upon us and clothe your people with power from on high alleluia Blessed are you, Lord, God of our creation. To you be praise and glory forever. Raised to your right hand and our high, the ascended Christ shows the Prince of Love, bestows on us the gifts of grace. As your Spirit renews the face of the earth, may we bring forth the fruit of the Spirit and reveal your glory in all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so the, the confession, we say the confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought not to have done. And we have done those things which we ought. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. I need to fix this. Uh, this is why I'm, I'm not focused. This thing is much better. Okay, good. It was a bit crooked there. All right, uh, the evening, this evening, our psalm is Psalm 116, 116, 116. <clears throat> I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. 
precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> now just read one of the comment. A thankful life. The psalmist almost died. In his fear, he called everyone a liar, but he trusted God even when his emotions were out of control. Now he has restructured his life on the basis of grateful love. The first mark of a thankful life is this. I will call on him as long as I live. To call on God's name means two things in the Bible. To trust in him and nothing else for your salvation. And to orient your whole life to prayer and worship. Grateful people should also walk before God. Verse 9. This means to live conscious of him at all times. It is to be both wholly exposed and accountable, but wholly befriended and loved. Love the Lord, for he listens. Amen. So we pray. Lord, when we get into a tight place, our heart instinctively says, I can fix this. I can handle this. We think about people to call, but it is all futile. We can't handle life. And the sooner we admit this deep in, my, in ourselves, the sooner we'll know the peace of always calling on you, on your name for help. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> and um, our New Testament reading, this evening, our New Testament reading is First John, First John chapter four, verses one to six. First John four, one to six. <clears throat> First John four. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you know, you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is from God, does not acknowledge Jesus, is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and ho overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Amen. Now, John is saying, it is, is, is a th the theme that comes through from verse, from chapter 2. There are people among us, there are antichrists, there are people who teach false things about Christ. And he tells us specifically what they teach in this, in this, in this, um, in this chapter. This is how we recognize the spirit of God, he says. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. In other words, Anyone who teaches the incarnation, the fact that Christ became a man, Jesus, that God 
became a human being, that Jesus Christ, the God of universe, came in the flesh. That person, that person is speaking from the Spirit of God. But anyone who doesn't acknowledge this is not speaking with the Spirit of God. That person, that teacher, that prophet is a false teacher, is an antichrist, a false Christ. They are, they are giving information about Christ. That is false. And so, Paul, and, so, and so John says we are to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. We are to test the spirit. We are to um, challenge such teachings. We are to prove. And the only way you can test these, these, the spirit of these false teachers is through the word of God, by the Holy Spirit himself, uh, uh, helping us to see the error in their ways. I mean, we have plenty of people today, what's not just within the Christian religion, but even within other religions, I mean, Islam is one example that doesn't teach the incarnation, that doesn't, that, that denies that God has come in the flesh, that Christ now became a human being. Um, I mean, they, they believe Jesus is some prophet or uh, uh, um, some, um, yeah, some great prophet. But that's, that, 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 that is no compliment at all. Um, you know, uh, Muslims always say to me, you know, we, 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 have G we hold Jesus in such high regard because we regard him as one of the great prophets. Yeah, but Muhammad is greater. Yes, but he's still a great prophet. That is not high regard. That's actually a demotion because Jesus Christ is greater than any prophet. Jesus Christ is God who has come in the flesh. And so anyone who denies this is not from God, says, says John. And we have to be very careful here. Because there are plenty, I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses deny this. Um, you know, so we meet them all the time. And, and John says these people are Antichrist. This is what the spirit of Antichrist is. You've heard about Antichrist coming? Well, it's here. It's the spirit of Antichrist is already in our midst teaching false doctrines, false, false beliefs about Jesus. And the, the particular false belief that, um, this, that John is mentioning here is the incarnation that Jesus Christ, God, has come in the flesh. Anyone who doesn't teach that is not from God. Anyone who denies the incarnation is not from God. So he says, verse 4, you dear children are from God and you have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than those, than the one who is in the world. Who is in us? That's the Holy Spirit. Who is in the world? That's the evil one, the evil spirit, the devil. And John is saying, the, the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. And that is why we are overcomers. We don't overcome in our own might, in our own power, in our own strength. We overcome the world because the one who lives in us, namely the Holy Spirit, is greater, infinitely greater than the one who is in the world. And so he helps us to discern the spirits to discern teachings the holy spirit will help us through the word of god to discern when false teachers seek to teach things about about christ that is not true let's pray <clears throat> and so we we come tonight with our own desires, our own anxieties, our own concerns, and we bring them before God. And we pray that the Lord will hear us tonight through the power of the Holy Spirit, by the intercession of our Savior Jesus Christ, 
that our Lord will hear us. And we call out to him like the psalmist. We call to him tonight. Because we know when we call out to him, he hears us. And so whatever it is you're going through tonight, whatever it is you're feeling, how you feel, maybe you feel down, maybe you feel depressed, maybe you feel lonely, maybe you feel that you life is not worth living. Maybe you feel that there is no light at the end of the the tunnel as it were and you can't see any hope we cry out to God because he cares and he hears us when we cry, when we when we call out to him he hears us he promises to hear us and we know he does and so we come to him tonight through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us and through Jesus' intercession for us in heaven, we, we bring our petitions, we bring our needs, and we ask for his help. <clears throat> so we thank God for this day. We thank God for his, 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 his graciousness to us today in, in providing for us all that we needed for this day. Just for this day. Tomorrow is another day, but today we give God thanks for sustaining us and keeping us through this day and for strengthening our faith so that we are able to overcome the evil spirit, the evil, the evil one who will who, who, who tries to deceive us through false teachers and false prophets. We thank you, Lord, that you have empowered us, anointed us with your Holy Spirit, so that we will not, we will not be fooled by false teachers, by those who proclaim a false Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you for the spirit who lives in us and for the word which you have given us so that we can meditate, in, imbibe your word. Because when your word is in us, your Holy Spirit will use that word to lead us into all truth. And so Lord, tonight we entrust this, this night to you. We entrust our lives, our family, our friends, our homes, our church to you. Lord, we are weak, but you are strong. We are told that it is in our weakness that we are strong when we trust in your all-sufficient grace. So, Lord, we pray tonight, make us strong. Whatever it is that we might be going through mentally, emotionally, physically, make us strong tonight, Lord, we pray. Give us courage to face the foe in the power of your might. And so, Lord, we ask that you'll help us to put on the whole armor so that we can take our stand against the evil one. So that when the evil day comes, when the day of disaster comes, we are able to stand in you. And so, Lord, tonight, even as we go to sleep, give us peaceful rest, Lord. Give us comfort, we pray. Make us dwell in safe, safety tonight, we pray. And so, Lord, cleanse our hearts, cleanse our guilty consciences, and, and make us, give us clean hands and pure hearts tonight. Wash our hands clean in the blood of Christ and purify our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit so that we can enter into your presence whole, forgiven, righteous, not because of anything in us, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. 
And so, dear Lord, we pray, sanctify us through and through. Make us holy. Set us apart for your, for your glory. And so, Lord, we remember those who are weeping tonight because of bereavement in their lives. We pray for them. Those in our own parish, those in our own, those we know, we think of Veronica and others who might be, who might be mourning the passing of a loved one tonight. Lord, give them grace to endure and to, to believe and to trust in your resurrection power. And the person who has died and in their own lives, give them hope knowing, Lord, that we shall we shall see our loved ones again. All those who have died in the love of Christ will one day share in his resurrection. And so, Lord, we hold on to that promise tonight. And so, Lord, be with us, we pray, and strengthen us tonight as we sleep. And give us the rest we so desperately need in our hearts. Make us sleep comfortably tonight. Wake us up refreshed in the morning by your grace and your mercy. We bring these to you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And so let's um let's say a few of the night prayers. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness through jesus christ our lord amen visit this place O lord and drive far from it all the snares of the enemy let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace and let your blessings be always upon us through jesus christ our lord amen Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us sinners. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let's listen to our theme song as we say good night and goodbye to this Thursday. And seek God's help for the rest of the night.
The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you tonight and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a good night, folks.